All right, let's talk about static variables in functions. So first of all, when you have a function, so say int counter, uh, any variables that go in or go out are all that we care about. However, we can have a static variable. So static int x equals zero, that every time this counter is run, that variable still exists and is saved. So I can do x plus plus and then return x. So if I run this and decide to display the output, see out, so I do C out, I can have counter and I can even run this multiple times and see that it is changing. So let's run this a couple times. All right, when I run it, it prints out the numbers one, two, and three because each time it runs, it gives you a new number. I can do it with another one as well. So let's say I have one that does strings. So we got the string thing, and let's have it be message. Maybe you could do like error messages or some kind of debugging message, but we got message. And now we even can set it so that it can either receive a message, new MSG, or maybe it's called MSG, MSG, or um, we can even have this be set to a default value of just an empty string. And then if it wants to, we can change it or not, you know. And what I can do here is do a static string here. And this would be um, saved MSG. And we'll have that just be the empty string to begin with. And then if there is a message is passed in, it will update it. So if MSG is not equal to the blank, then it will update it. So saved MSG equals MSG, the one that comes in, and then I can just return what is saved. So for this, I can now run the same thing, just change this to message. And the first time it should display just an empty nothing. And then each time I run this, it should be able to update it. So I'm going to have this new message, message one. And then down here, I will have it be message two. So the idea is the first time it'll print out the just a blank line, the second time it'll print out message one. Then I'll print message one again, then I'll print message two, then message two again. And I go ahead and run this. So it's got a blank line, message one, message one, message two, message two. So you can see how it saves the message and then updates it only in certain conditions. Now, these things don't really seem like they make a whole lot of useful sense, but if you have more complex things, you can have memory, and so your functions can save information they didn't use for other things. So you can have much more complex things than just integers or strings. You could have linked lists or maybe associative arrays or hash tables, and you can store lots of data in those. Anyway, this is how you do static variables in C++.